If you want to hear the theory about how everything in this movie ties back to the original train crash in Unbreakable, then stick around to the end of this video. Welcome back to Things You Missed, and Happy Halloween. This will probably be the last episode I get to put up this October. It went by so fast. One thing that did not go by fast was the wait between Unbreakable and Split. That was a 16 year wait. So with that in mind, waiting till January for the third movie in the franchise Glass to come out doesn't seem as bad. Until then, we've got a second trailer and I've got some Things You Missed. You may have noticed the strong color scheme on display in Glass. Elijah Price has a lot of purples in his clothes, in his shoes, in his stuff. He's the villain, and the villain section in the comic book store is purple. And this is also kind of his movie in the series, and all of the titles are purple to signify that. Then there's the Horde, and his color is yellow. Like if you look at his comic book pages, the indicator lights on these machines in his room, and almost all of his outfits. Some of the rooms are either painted or lit to match these colors. And there is a line suggesting that Elijah and the Horde could team up. That sounds like the bad guys teaming up. Which may be the reason that this room is striped in yellow and purple. David Dunn is green, the color of his iconic rain poncho from the first movie until now, and the color of his outfit at the mental institution matches that. And the hero section of the comic book store is green as well. The respective characters' colors are made very obvious in the poster, though I do hope we get another poster at some point with the cracked glass on it to match up with the split and unbreakable posters that fit together when laid out side by side. You can also see each of their colors represented in different rooms on the security monitors if you pause right here. You may be wondering why there's so much focus on these colors. I recommend you go pay attention to the movies. Peace. No, okay, fine. I think the colors are there to represent David's innate ability to sense evil. He has this sense. A sixth sense, if you will. Okay, I really have to stop trying to put jokes in my videos. In the first movie, we see that if David touches someone, then he can see the bad things that they've done, and he can track bad people in a crowd because their color will stand out to him and become much more saturated. So I think purple and yellow are their villain colors as seen by David. Once David and the Horde are captured and put into the institution, the woman studying them, her name's Dr. Staple, has individual methods for keeping them all in check. For Elijah, they keep him sedated because apparently he's become such a good manipulator that they can't even handle him if he's full awake. He's too smart for them. David's room is filled with these pipes and nozzles because his weakness is water. So they give him a spray whenever he becomes unruly. This would also be an effective room for scientists to study the aliens from signs, don't you think? <laughs> the method that they use to keep the horde under control is pretty much explained verbatim in the trailer. The light will force a different identity to take over. Por favor, senora. I want my headphones back. Step away from the controls now, little doctor. Can't beat the beast! When I did the video talking about the first Glass trailer, I wondered why Dr. Staple didn't have the Horde chained down like David Dunn. In this trailer, you can see that the flashing lights are set up behind her so she can change him to a different personality if things get dicey. The fact that these are the weaknesses is very interesting to me, and here's why. Think back to Unbreakable. One of the most iconic scenes in that movie, I mean heck, one of the most iconic scenes in cinema, is the scene where he rescues the kidnapped kids in the rain, almost drowning in the pool as he does so. That's an epic scene. But imagine what the final showdown could be like in Glass. A fight breaks through the glass window into a thunderstorm. David is dramatically weakened by the water, but the intermittent flashes of lightning cause the Horde to be constantly changing personalities, throwing him into complete disarray. So it'll come down to Elijah to think of some clever solution. When I did the things you missed on the first Glass trailer, I broke down this entire comic that appears on screen and talked about how this character could represent either the Horde or David because of his desire to protect people. In this trailer, we get a glimpse at another panel of this comic. It says, I vowed to protect everyone from those of us given these cruel gifts. That line suggests that this is more likely representative of David. Why is it do you think that of all the professions in the world you chose protection? However, I wouldn't also rule out the possibility that this is a sign that the Beast will change sides and realize that he wants to be a good guy. Also, I think they've already learned their lesson about the Beast's ability to bend bars because it looks like in his room, he's got bricks for windows. 
Next, there's a scene in which Elijah sneaks into the record room and accesses the Horde's medical file. Let's pause on that and take a closer look. You'll notice some of the names of the identities familiar to us from Split, such as Raquel, Luke, Polly, Bernice, and of course, the Beast. We know this because each identity has a file on the computer in Split. However, there are some new names here, like this name ending in Elita, and this name ending in the letters M-A. So this could be evidence that there are still new personalities emerging within the Horde, just as the Beast emerged as a 24th personality back in Split. Speaking of the Beast, the first time Kevin's body was transformed into the Beast was at the train station in Split. The backstory is glossed over, and we find out in that movie that Kevin's dad left on a train when he was a child and never came back, leading some to believe that this emotional damage caused the identity disorder, and some to theorize that the train that he left on was East Rail 177, the train that crashed and left David Dunn as the only survivor. I bring this all up because the new trailer reveals a scene taking place in what appears to be a hobo camp inside of a subway station, and the Beast is the one who's exploring it. And probably scaring the hobos so bad. I mean, could you imagine hiding in an abandoned tunnel and all of a sudden this approaches you? There is one other possible callback hidden in this trailer, and that is when Elijah Price is addressing David at the microphone. David. I found someone who will require your full attention. This monologue is very reminiscent of the voicemails Elijah leaves on David's answering machine in Unbreakable, when he tries to encourage him to embrace his superhero side. David, it's Elijah. It was so obvious. It was this one issue that brought it back for me. This group, the Coalition of Evil, tried to ascertain the weakness of every superhero because they all have one. All right, I do have a few more things you missed, but not a whole lot to say about them. The first is in this shot, and while we're focused on Elijah, some dude gets wrecked by the beast in the background. That's a super interesting choice to have the action play out as a barely noticeable background detail. So I'm interested to see how that plays out in the actual movie. Then in this shot, I noticed David Dunn's son, Joseph, holding his arm as if he's injured. Joseph always believed that his dad was a superhero, and there are a few instances where he puts his dad in dangerous situations to try to prove it. I have to wonder if he starts to believe that he's inherited these same powers and that's how he gets himself hurt or if one of the bad guys targets him to try to rattle David. Towards the end of the trailer, Elijah can be spotted wearing this necklace with the initials MG. I'm assuming that stands for Mr. Glass and if that's true then it seems like Elijah's really playing into his supervillain persona. Then we've got a shot of Casey Cook from Split getting off of this bus, and this is actually the same bus that David gets off in his neighborhood in Unbreakable. Now it's hard to say if that's an actual reference to Unbreakable, or if this is just a common bus line in Philadelphia, so if any of you guys are from Philly, feel free to let me know in the comments. So I've got several videos in the pipeline right now. As I mentioned, this is probably the last of the October uploads. I know I had also expressed interest in doing an episode on the Happy Death Day to You trailer. That's because I thought it was out already, but they haven't actually put it on Online yet, despite the fact that it's playing in front of Halloween in theaters right now. I would like to wait for that to come out on YouTube before I do the Things You Missed episode. And I know there have been a lot of Things You Missed lately, and there is a reason for that. A lot of you have been asking where the next Al Dente Creepypasta is. For those of you who don't know, that's my Scary Story narration series. I've got some new episodes planned, so that should be back on soon as well. And I have decided to do a little marathon leading up to the release of Glass. I'll be doing a Things You Missed on Unbreakable and Split. So if if you are a fan of this thriller horror series, which I'm imagining you are if you made it this far in the video, then remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring that death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.